over the last decade or so, um, uh, you know, there have been, or, or put it this way, over the last few years, there have been increasing reports about uh, uh, young people, children, early teens, prepubescent teens, uh, be treated at certain facilities. In the UK, it was all concentrated in one facility, and that was uh, Tavistock, uh, which was an NIH uh, facility uh, that, that specialized in dealing with uh, young people who, ha who are having uh, gender dysphoria that believed that for some reason they should be a different gender. And uh, they were born the wrong sex, if you will. And uh, the, 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 there was one facility in, um, in the UK that dealt with all these patients and uh, with all these kind of challenges, all these kind of children really feeling this and, and, and uh, this being a, becoming a medical issue. And there have been rumors uh, and, and uh, uh, whistleblower reports about uh, really abusive behavior going on in uh, Tavistock. And abusive behavior really was focused on uh, providing uh, these, uh, these children with uh, things like, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, blocking uh, puberty blockers, so preventing them from achieving puberty, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, giving girls who want to become men uh, masculine hormones and uh, men who want to become women, uh, uh, female hormones, in order to change basically the functioning of their body. And uh, you know this this was and this was uh, this was happening to children, to children prepubescent, so uh, you know young children, um, and uh, uh, and you know, there, there, there was a lot of, there was a lot of angst about what was happening, particularly in Tavistock in the United States. It's happening in all kinds of private institutions all over the country, although a number of red states now have passed laws to prohibit uh, providing this kind of treatment uh, to, um, uh, to anybody, I think, younger than 18. Uh, a lot of this came out of a, a, a study that uh, was done in the Netherlands. Uh, and in this study, they had taken some uh, children uh, who had, uh, uh, they, who had uh, uh, gender dysphoria, given them these puberty blockers and then given them, uh, given them these hormones. Uh, ultimately, I think uh, some of them got the surgery. And, and uh, the, the, the you know, the conclusion of all of the, of this uh, Dutch study was, and this is, uh, was that, yeah, this was the way to treat the dysphoria. Uh, the results were presented as positive results. The results were presented as this solves this problem of these children being confused. They get this treatment and all is good. Anyway, for a number of years now, there have been doubts about this conclusion of all is good. A number of people, a number of kids who have had this treatment uh, and became adults, uh, tried to detransition, tried to go backwards, and found it very difficult, found that what they had done to themselves as children, uh, or what was done to them, really, as children, given that they are children, was irreversible. Uh, and, uh, and, and given that they now wanted their previous identity, their previous biology back, they, uh, they regretted the whole thing and, uh, and raised real questions about what is being done to, to, to these children that's truly irreversible. And is it true that this is, uh, that this is all healthy and good and solves these real uh, you know, problems uh, that, that people have in terms of their so-called, what they feel their uh, gender is. Over the last 10 years or so, there's been a real explosion in the number of kids who claim to have uh, gender dysphoria. Now, the numbers are still small, so I don't think we should exaggerate the issue here. But the reality is that the, the, the numbers have grown significantly. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and all in a 
relatively short period of time. I mean, for example, in 1989, when Tavistock was first established, um, you know, it, 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 or put it this way, in, yeah, it, it was first established in 1989, so it's quite a while ago. In 2009, they saw 80 patients. In the whole year of 2009, they saw 80 patients. This is 20 years after they were established. Well, 2019, they, were seeing, they saw 2,700 patients. So 89 started, got to 80 patients by 2009, and by 2019, 2,700 patients. And indeed, it is this 10 years, so about 2009 to about 2019, that's a, a real explosion in this issue. And, and nobody has a complete explanation for what it is, what, what caused uh, uh, children and teenagers uh, to suddenly have this gender dysphoria. Now, there are a lot of potential explanations. Uh, one could be, and this is one that a lot of people claim, is that in the past, there were just as many children, but they were, their parents shut them down. They were, it was suppressed. It, it was denied. And the reason you got such large numbers was because it was more socially acceptable to admit that you had this issue. You know, other people have said that it's because, um, you know, people are being propagandized that it's cool. And therefore, uh, it became cool to be this. And some people who didn't actually feel it now are pretending to feel it because it was now cool to do it. Um, Others have claimed, I'm sure, uh, you know, RFK would probably go with this, that it's maybe something in our environment that it changed the biology or changed the, the whatever nature that we have that determines these feelings are there. And others, um, you know, I would argue that a lot of it has to do with, I would argue that the primary cause of this is the elevation of emotion above everything else, that the, the, the worship of emotion uh, the, the idea that a child's emotion are the, really the only important thing. And, and uh, you know, so that uh, if, if, uh, if a girl said, oh, I really should have been a boy, the parents take that seriously. Uh, whereas in the past they would have said, yeah, she's a, it, it, she's a tomboy, she'll get over it. Uh, and now it's completely taken seriously and now you take it to the doctor because she said she might be a boy because it's, 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 we take that emotion as the primary and we also then... Uh, it's now acceptable that this is something that's treatable, which is weird. Why would it be treatable, even if it is? Um, so, it, it, I, you know, my view is it's just this, this ultimate in subjectivism, the ultimate subjectivism. Now, there's no question, or it seems like there's no question, to the extent that I know, that some people do have something. There is some biological basis for some people to be confused. Uh, people who have, uh, you know, these rare cases where they have more than just a, you know, X, Y, uh, where, the, where the chromosomes are mixed up, where there's a, a combination of chromosomes that is, uh, that is not normal, not purely female or purely male. We don't know a lot about that. But there's probably some people where there is real uh, biological reasons that they, you know, people who are born with both, um, you know, obviously people who are born with both uh, sets of uh, sexual organs. There's also kind of strange, marginal things that happen. But that's not the reason it went from 80 to 2,700. So, First is a phenomenon that grows exponentially. The second part of uh, uh, the growth that happened between 2009 and 2019 has to do with who, right? And that is um, who was suddenly identifying as, you know, with this uh, gender dysphoria. And in the past, it had been predominantly boys who uh, really felt like they should be female. 
And what happened in the period between 2009 and 2019, 2009 and 2019, is it became primarily goals. It became overwhelmingly goals. That is, the growth rate in goals having this issue spiked while boys, basically, the numbers stayed pretty constant. Again, why girls more susceptible to social pressure, to cool fa coolness factor, to emotion, to the emotionalism of the time, hard to tell. You know, girls who might be feel left out by, or might have their, uh, what do you call it, uh, their tomboy inclination suppressed by their friends or by their parents or by society, maybe this is a way out. Um, anyway, we've seen this vast increase, primarily among girls, but not only among girls. Um, and, uh, and, and this is something that I think surprised people, it was unexpected, and suddenly this clinic, Tavistock and other clinics in the United States, were overwhelmed by uh, these numbers. Now, out of the United States, out of the US, the, the first kind of study in quotation mind, the first experimentations around this were, were done, again, in the Netherlands. But then out of the United States came the protocol of how to treat. And the protocol, again, involved, you know, uh, uh, involved uh, suppressing puberty and, uh, and giving the other sex, the other sex is hormones, so, uh, so uh, hormone therapy. Uh, and this, uh, the United States exported that and exported it as this is, this is state of the art. This is what you do. There's science behind it. And those, uh, you know, when, when, when people started criticizing all this, some of, one of the things that the uh, proponents of treating uh, transgenderism like this, uh, some of the proponents of it said, look, this is the way to, to, to stop suicide. So a big part of this was it's mental health. The only way to deal with this mental health crisis that we have, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, gender dysphoria is the mental health crisis, is the only way is to let them change, let them, you know, play with the chemistry of the body to, to, to change their gender. Right. And, and ultimately that involves surgery and all the rest. Uh, anyway, you know, so there's been a lot of controversy around this. And uh, uh, Tavistock, uh, again, a lot of rumors about this. There was a court case uh, where basically uh, in, in 2019 that basically uh, said something's wrong here. Um, and, and uh, you know, doing this to, to young people below the age of 16, below the age of consent, uh, that's wrong. How can they consent to something? They, they don't have the faculty in order to consent to it. This is life-changing. This is altering forever. Uh, and, and a lot of what Tavistock, uh, you know, a lot of the functionality of Tavistock was shut down, particularly when it comes to younger ages, was shut down uh, a, a few years ago as a consequence. But in the meantime, remember in, in England, all this health care is provided by the state. The NHS appointed a, a commission uh, actually, one person, Hillary Cass, uh, a, uh, a physician, uh, basically to uh, do an independent review. She was the chair of this independent review into gender identity services in the UK. Uh, and uh, she, uh, she was, you know, she was given access, supposedly, to records, to studies, to the science, she was given access to some of the children who'd had this, uh, put these procedures uh, put on them. Uh, and, and she spent, uh, uh, I think, three years delving deep into this issue. Now, uh, she is a pediatric. She was the, I think she's headed up the pediatric, the, the, the medical association. So she's highly qualified uh, physician, highly qualified doctor. And if you read the report, if you read summaries of the report, or you see her on television, uh, she strikes one as super reasonable um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, very, uh, very open and reasonable and focused on science. Anyway, uh, these are some of her conclusions. Now, you might not agree with all of her conclusions, uh, and, and particularly 
uh, you know, you might not agree with all of her conclusions, but these, these are the conclusions she came to. And uh, this is pretty devastating to the trans movement, particularly the trans movement, parts of the trans movement focused on uh, on children, focused on trying to get children to, uh, to transition. And uh, it, 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 it's brutal towards them. And it's interesting to see how the trans movement has responded. And in particular, to see uh, you know, how it's responded in the US. In the UK, the response can be kind of uniform because the government can decide not to fund these things. Uh, but in the US, it, it, it's 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 almost completely a political issue rather than a a, a health issue, and um, we're seeing blue and red states divide on this rather than everybody looking at the science and deciding what to do. Anyway, these are some of the conclusions I'm reading from a summary of the review. First, there's no simple explanation for the increase in numbers of predominantly young people and young adults who have a trans or gender diverse uh, you know, I, I identity or claim to have one. Uh, but there's broad agreement that, this, that it is a result of a complex interplay between biology, phys, uh, psychological, and social factors. This balance of factors will be different in each individual. So one of the things I like about this study is she does try to treat people as individuals. Now, I think, I think you know, most of the drivers here are psychological, particularly for the increase. Maybe there's a physiological reason for a small, very small number of people. But in terms of an increase, the increase here is social and psychological. And it's important to get to the root of what that social and psychological reason is. By the way, one example of this, which she talks about, with, with uh, Hillary Cass talks about in, um, in one of the interviews I saw, but that uh, also um, Andrew uh, Sullivan, um, Andrew Sullivan, the gay conservative writer who I debated at Clemson University, he writes about is this idea that this that uh, transitioning in a sense was a solution uh, for gay kids, right? Let's say you're gay. Let's say you discover you're gay when you're young. You're attracted, you're, you're a guy, you're, you're a male, and you're attracted to other males. But you're also in a culture that's very homophobic, and maybe you've adopted that. You, 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 you hate the idea of gayness. You hate the idea of homosexuality. You want to deny it. You want to resent it. You want to reject it. Well, one way to do that and appease yourself psychologically is basically to say to yourself, well, I'm not really a man. I'm a woman, and I'm attracted to a man, and that's normal. So you're willing to transition in order to avoid facing your own, you know, homosexuality. And I think that is, you know, that is probably the case in many of these cases. I mean, if you read Andrew Sullivan, he has an article about this. I mean, he just, he's infuriated by this trans movement and just, uh, and, and, and thinks that it's, it's basically uh, an, an attempt to, uh, Right uh, to 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 go after to go after gay kids and to destroy gay kids and that the victims of this are almost all gay kids. He says eighty percent of the children subject to this experiment, this transitioning, were of a marginalized group, gay kids. And the result of these procedures, he says, was to cure them, cure them of the same sex attraction by converting them to the opposite sex. And he says, how can anybody support such a thing? So there's evidence that that is a chunk of it, a chunk of it. Now, it is surprising that there's so much antagonism towards uh, gayness or towards being homosexual, given how acceptable it has become in our culture. So that would be my one caveat about that. You wouldn't have expected it. But it's still not completely acceptable to be gay, and uh, it turns out that people, some kids internalize the hatred of homosexuality on themselves, and it's easier for them to transition, which I find just bizarre because transitioning is, it, just think about how horrific that is. So, um, you know, she basically says, we don't completely know why this is happening. Uh, but then the question is, what do you do about it? 
And basically your conclusions are this. There is just no good, no decent even science behind transitioning. There's no science that shows, for example, that if you transition kids, they commit suicide less. That if you transition kids who express gender euphoria, uh, dysphoria, that they are less depressed, that they have less psychological. There's just zero evidence of any of that. All the things that the pro-transitioning crowd has argued for are just not real. She says the science that people have been quoting for years and years and years about this stuff is pathetic. It's not good science. Bad science permeates this field. Everywhere she looked at the scientific literature was just way below par. Now, she says there's no science to show that this is harmful, but there's no science. You don't do these kind of medical procedures in the face of no science, no evidence, no proof that this actually works. So, uh, you know, uh, this idea of using masculinizing or feminizing hormones, right, in underage kids, we don't know what effect that has on them. We don't know what effect it has on their future. We don't know to what extent it's reversible or not. We have no idea. There are no studies determining what the long-term effects are. There's no real follow-up data. It's another thing that she discovered. The NHS does all this stuff, and there's no follow-up data. Now, this is exactly science. This is science that's showing that what they were doing is hackery. But the only way to show that what they were doing is hackery is through science. So, Ken, as always, you're just being dishonest. You might have, as you claim, a high IQ, but a high IQ as, with a dishonest person is wasted garbage. And that's what you are. It's just infuriating the, the stupidity of these people. Sorry. Now, the very idea of taking children and running them through experiments that change their very biology is horrific. It should have never been allowed. Fundamentally, immoral, but is illegal. It is a violation of the child's rights. It is, in my view, child abuse. Children should have never been allowed to do this. Parents should have never been given the power to consent or not to consent, unless there was some significant medical reason that necessitated the procedure. But in the absence of scientific evidence, in the absence of scientific proof that this is safe and worth doing, scientific proof, to do this is so medically irresponsible, so scientifically irresponsible, that you would expect the scientific establishment, the people responsible for this, the doctors, the psychologists, to resign in mass given what this report shows. No scientific basis. No positive outcomes or no proof of positive outcomes. Now, when you're 18, you want to take hormones, you want to change your gender, you want to go through surgery, your problem. I have no qualms in terms of legally allowing people to do that. You want to, you know, in, in some cases... You want to screw up your life completely? Screw them up. All right, my last comment. Ken, you don't know what you're talking about. You just don't know. You're, you're ignorant. You don't understand science. You have no idea about COVID or about artificial meat or about anything scientific. You're an ignoramus, so leave it alone. Now, 
I need to be better disciplined and to ignore him because he's really not worth commenting. So, so from now on, I will try to apply that principle. It's hard for me. I have to admit, it, it's, it's one of those things that even I know it's wrong to feed him because, because people like him live off of, live off of. You research COVID like crazy, but when you have your kind of abilities and dishonesty, you're going to come to wrong conclusions. There I did it again. I find it very difficult to engage, not to engage with stupidity. It was like, you know, when I see the Hamas demonstrations out in the street, my first instinct is to go up and start yelling at them. And I really have to make an effort to, to hold myself back, not to do it. And there, the damage is physical damage. Here, it's just, uh, you know, being obnoxious and, 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 uh, and maybe losing some of you. All right, let's get back to this. I mean, this is child abuse. Uh, now, it appears that in the UK, this is being taken very seriously. It appears that in the UK, right? It appears that in the UK, um, the, um, uh, the authorities are going to dramatically restrict what these doctors can and cannot do. I do think that there has to be a reckoning within the profession. There has to be a reckoning among the people who actually facilitated this, who actually made this happen. It is said that in the United States, in some clinics, when a, a child comes in claiming sexual uh, dysphoria, that they are given puberty blockers after one or two visits. You can't analyze, figure out, I mean, there are a lot of much more simple with fewer long-term consequences procedures that require multiple visits and multiple investigations and multiple considerations, and yet something like this that is literally life-changing and where a child has no capacity to deal with the long-term consequences. Doctors are recommending treatment on the basis of one or two. These people should be kicked out of the profession. So, um, I think in the UK, the recommendations of the CAS committee are going to be taken seriously. Uh, partially because it centralized authority, uh, all of it through um, uh, through the NHS. They have the ability to change everything all at once. Tavistock, I think, has been shut down. Um, I think they're basically going to ban the ability to do any of these treatments for anybody under 16. I think over the ages, between 16 and 18, there's going to be very, very high barriers in, in, uh, in England. Uh, in the UK, the age of consent is 16. So uh, there is a legal argument that people at 16 can make this decision. But, you know, chaos says, no, it should be 18. Uh, it should not be 16. A lot of kids at 16 are not in a position to be able to make these kind of decisions. So there's a real push to limit it to 16. Now, we'll see, because there's a massive backlash against this. The, as, as you might know, the uh, trans activists are nasty, nasty, nasty people. I mean, uh, uh, Cass, this, this woman doctor, she can't, she can't get on public transport now without being harassed, without her, her, her life being threatened by trans activists. She's constantly, constantly uh, suffering from abuse from people around her for basically being a scientist. Now, we know this from how J.K. Rawlins has been treated for having pretty rational, pretty mild, rational views on trans issues. And yet she is being shunned, abused, her life has been threatened as a consequence. This is the wacky left. The wacky left is an authoritarian left. The wacky left is a, wack is a left, in this case, that wants to, and is dedicated really to, 
rejecting ASA, rejecting identity, rejecting nature. Everything should be possible if we feel it. Everything should be guided by our emotions. Tell with reason, tell with science, tell with thought. It's all about emotion, feelings. And we should cater to everybody's emotions and feelings. At least cater to the emotions and feelings of those who feel oppressed. Right? Those who are struggling, those who are different. Intersectionality, oppressor, oppressed, all of that. So uh, there is a massive backlash against this. Uh, this is really, John, absolutely, this is really a manifestation of the primacy of consciousness, a real manifestation of the primacy of consciousness, uh, in a, in a, which is what the left has embraced. And again, here you have a merging of the left and right, as you do often. Uh, you know, the, the left has a, 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 um, a primacy of consciousness in an individual's mind or an individual's emotional state. The right's primacy of consciousness is like God's consciousness, right? A consciousness outside of you. And it's the, it's the, it's the reflection on that. But it's all primacy of consciousness. You know, let's pray for it. The prayer is primacy of consciousness, but, but you're appealing to a consciousness out there. The left's consciousness is in you as an individual, but it is the primary and it is the most important thing, and it is what shapes reality. Reality is determined by your consciousness. Consciousness is not just a tool, just, is not the tool by which we observe, integrate the, 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 the evidence that is given to us about reality, the, the, the data that is provided to us about reality, it creates, it makes reality up. In particular, it makes reality up about ourselves. And when you don't have kind of an objective grasp of uh, human identity, if your guide is not human reason, if your guide, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this because this, this raises a point that Dugan and Tucker Carlson raise. Uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow or the next day. We'll talk about it this week. It's, it's very similar. Is if you get to a point of not, of subjectivism and privacy of consciousness, of cultivating and focusing on emotion at all other costs, then this is the state you get to. This is the point where, you know, what you want to do is just whatever you feel like, that has to happen. You demand that that happens. And if, you're, if, that, if that emotion is leading you to be one of these so-called oppressed minorities, then you have a political right to make that happen. In the United States, I haven't seen much in terms of a discussion of the cast review. Again, some red states, some Republican states have passed laws prohibiting uh, transitioning therapy uh, for children. I, I think on this, they probably do it for all the wrong reasons, but it's the right laws. Uh, so I, I agree with that as a, as a law. Um, but, uh, you know, the reality is that kids can still leave and go, and, and go to other states like California where uh, children can get transitioned without parental authority. There are states, I think Washington, Oregon, places like that, where parents who don't approve of their child transitioning, can be accused of, you know, of, of child abuse. It's just unbelievable how little the left cares about children. And they use pseudoscience, not science, but pseudoscience, in order to justify their claims. And one of the great things about the cash review is that she approaches this as a scientist and therefore what she calls them out on is not a political agenda and it's not even a philosophical argument 
What she calls them out on is the scientific claims you're making are pseudoscience. There is no science behind what you are arguing. There is no science behind what you are arguing. So um, this is the, I think, the value of this. Uh, I expect that the backlash against the uh, trans movement, particularly as it relates to children, will increase. Um, I mean, it, it, there should be laws on the books across the country to stop mutilating children. If adults want to mutilate themselves, go at it. But uh, to do this to children is truly horrific and, uh, and scary. It's scary. It's scary, particularly given that what, you know, the, the, in some states, again, the politics of it are such that the child's feeling are more important than the authority of the parent. And uh, the, the willingness of these crazy doctors uh, to go ahead with these procedures without necessarily having parental approval, when the science, again, according to Cass, is clearly saying, stop, you don't know what you're doing, and the long-term consequences are horrific, and now the numbers of stories of, of, of people coming out that are regretting the whole thing, where this is to largely destroy their lives because it's irreversible. It's just, it's just horrific. It's just horrific. Um, and it's time that it stopped, and it's time that it stopped everywhere, uh, everywhere.